Good morning, afternoon, and evening to you all. I hope you're ready to take your ears around the world. Whether it be the vivacious and lively music of Latin America, the complex and distinctive sounds of the Balkans, or the emotionally diverse music of Asia, we'll go through it all. So tune in and join me in following The Sounds That Travel. Last episode, we dove into the ever-expanding music of Cumbia, and this time, we're trudging west from Colombia towards Japan. Music in Japan has a lot of diversity stemming from both traditional and modern influences, which is why today, we're going to be discussing uh, and focusing on some traditional instruments that have returned to the modern world, so a little bit of a mixture of both. To preface, while I did do some research, I can't take all the credit, a friend of mine is also responsible for providing me with sources, some neat videos, and a really good groundwork to base this episode on. Both of us did projects and taught a music-based lesson ingrained with ethnomusicology, so we're both trusted here a bit <laughs> with what we're pulling out for you. The first instrument we're discussing is the koto, which is K-O-T-O. -O. This is by far the most popular instrument in Japan, uh, it belongs to the string family and has a whopping 13 strings attached to it. On its own, that's a big jump from our usual 4-stringed orchestral instruments or a 6-stringed guitar. Um, in addition, they have a mobile bridge, and for those of you that don't know what a bridge is, which means you haven't played like a violin or a viola, whatever it is, um, the bridge is the wooden part, sort of like more towards the bottom half of the instrument, and it keeps the strings, like the tension for the strings, so that you can actually play. And with the Kodo, you can actually move and adjust that bridge to change the tuning of the instrument, depending on the arrangement, which is really, really cool. If you're new here, which most of you should be, considering, you know, new podcasts and everything, I like to immerse people in the environment that we're exploring. And we're talking about the Kodo. The musical line and the musical instrument songs it's been playing underneath this entire time is the koto. It's that higher pitched instrument that's kind of going back and forth. Um, how they play it is really cool too. They have these picks called sumes and they don't go, we don't hold them like you would for a guitar. They are actually put on the fingers and plucked, which is a really interesting way to play an instrument that I don't think necessarily exists uh, in, you know, Western traditions, so it's something really cool to point out. As I mentioned before, these instruments, like the koto, have started to be more involved in modern songs, and so this is a little more traditional, but we're going to take a quick look at something more modern. This is a small snippet from the band Tri Echoes doing Shape of You, and the instrumental, aside from the percussive beats, is entirely composed of the koto. Next up is the shakuhachi, the Japanese version of a recorder to put it simply. Unlike how we play a recorder though, the shakuhachi is played vertically. Traditionally, they were made out of the ends of bamboo roots. Uh, if you want another fun fact, I've, I've got a few coming up here. Uh, <laughs> shakuhachi translates to 1.8 feet, which is the standard length of a shakuhachi. Shaku means foot, and hachi means eight, so an eight of a foot. In addition, the shakuhachi has also been known to be used as a weapon, of all things. The root end of the instrument is tough. You know, the, the ends of the bamboo were really tough and durable. So it could be used as a blunt instrument, um, and many players of the shakuhachi were also ronin, or um, wandering samurai. So this thing is dangerous, and sounds pretty. You've been hearing it uh, since we started talking about it. Next up is the shamisen, which as this music comes in, it's the opening sound. It's been used in modern times for kabuki theater and other similar performances. One really interesting fact is that the pluck, called a bachi, can be more expensive than the instrument itself. 
Bachi can be made out of a few different materials, but the more desirable sound is that of ivory, which can be super expensive in comparison to, like, wood or plastic. The shamisen has adapted to modern uses. Players like the Yoshida Brothers have used the shamisen alongside their own personality when it comes to music. Uh, this reference is just a bit too old for me to remember, but I discovered that one of their songs gained a ton of popularity when it was used during the Nintendo Wii ads in North America during 2006. So, if you're listening to this episode, this next part might be a bit nostalgic for you as we play the song. The three instruments that I talked about, the koto, shakuhachi, and the shamisen, have been brought out to the modern world in Japan, and their outreach has clearly gone beyond their origins. Those were the main instruments that I wanted to talk about in coordinates with traditional instruments being brought out to the modern world, but with the remainder of our time here today, I am planning on a quick synopsis of other native instruments of Japan. There is another stringed instrument known as the biwa, which is also played with the bachi. Um, you really should look this instrument up online. The uh, shape of it is similar to a lute, but it has these giant tuning pegs sticking out. So there's this really cool, unique look to it. While there's been attempts to revitalize the biwa in the modern world, it ultimately lost popularity as modern music came about. Similarly, there is the sanshin, and the biggest difference is there is the number of strings. So the biwa has four, the sanshin has three. And actually, sanshin translates to three strings. It's very fitting. Um, their strings are referred to as uh, the male string, the female string, and then the middle string, which is based off of the pitch that they give. So the male string is the lowest, female string the highest, and of course the middle is in the middle for pitches. The last instrument I will mention is the teiko, very well known internationally, uh, they're drums. So I'm about to throw some terms at you, but there's not going to be a quiz on it, so don't sweat it. Uh, there are three types of teiko drums, the tsuzumi, the bio ukideko, and the udeko. So tsuzumis have an hourglass shape, and whereas a bio ukidekos are drums that are made out of a single piece of wood, and then the largest of them all are the udekos. Um, so I'm a music nerd, admittedly, but I would still recommend checking out these instruments online because they all look and sound super interesting. They're so different than what we're used to with, um, you know, in Western modern world for us. So that's the end of the podcast. As always, I'm Alex Crooks, and let me know where you want to go next. Thank you so much for joining me this morning, afternoon, or evening. Wherever you are and wherever you're going, join us next time as we go and follow the sounds that travel.